All right, for my next DIY project, we have a two by four lap steel. So as you can see, it it's definitely resembles a lap steel, uh, but if I grab it here, it's made from a common two by four. So you can see the headstock there is just notched out of the two by four. Um, straight down, we got a handle there. And then as we get here, the pickup uh, groove is notched out as well. And then um, the strings come through here and I grooved that so that it doesn't hit on the bottom. I put some feet on the bottom, uh, rounded off the heel back here. We'll get to that ring there in just a minute. Um, the, it's just a through body um, tailpiece there with some uh, ferrules there. The bridge and nut are both just standard maple um, uh, bridges like you'd use on a, a banjo or uh, you know mandolin or whatever. They're just a standard bridge there. I did this uh, star I found at a craft, show, uh, craft shop. So I thought it was just very Texas. Um, and I, that looks like, actually ended up looking really good. It looks kind of westerny and tuners here are just standard um, sealed tuners, nothing special there. Used a gate handle there as a handle. Um, and then uh, that's pretty much the size of it. Uh, the, this is not a new design per se. I'm gonna flip it over here. Um, it's not a new design per se. There's been a number of people that have done two by four lap steels, uh, but most of them, they have a fixed pickup and no controls. And uh, most of them use humbucking pickups. I wanted to do something a little different. So I added a control pocket here um, with a little cover that I made out of a scrap of poplar. And then it's got a pot there and a jack on the other side. So that way I've got a volume knob to adjust the pickup. Um, additionally, I used a P90 or soap bar pickup, opposed to most people have used humbuckers or various other pickups. I did that because number one, I really like the sound of a um, P90. Additionally, what I, one of the things I like about them is they really snarl when you've got some gain on it, but if you roll them off a little bit, with your volume knob, if you just roll it back a little, they clean up real nice and you get a really nice clean tone, which is also nice on the steel. So I really wanted to use a soap bar pickup. Inside here, after I notched out the body, I drilled an angled hole uh, between the two cavities and so they're connected so the wire can thread through. I think you can just kind of see the wire there. Uh, one thing that I did that I would change, I, I cut the pickup notch way too deep, as you can see there. Um, so what I had to do was actually put a small piece of wood in there um, as a shim because uh, the pickup was way too far from the strings. So I did that and then it looked really weird because you could see the wood, um, that piece of wood, either from the top view like this or from the side. So I just went in there with some black craft paint and just painted it down. And now when you turn it to that angle, you don't really see it because it just kind of looks like shadow in there. Um, but if, if I was building another one, that's one thing I would do is I would cut the pickup notch not so deep. Uh, this little thing over here, this ring, this chrome ring, uh, if you're wondering what that is for, when you plug it into an amp, one thing with a lap steel, is it's typically sitting on your lap or on a table so the cord can easily get in the way. So I just put that, you put the cord through there, loop it up into there, and it keeps the cord nice and out of the way for when you're playing it. The cord can just go off to the side. So this particular instrument um, probably took me longer to finish than any DIY instrument I've done uh, because I went with this sparkle paint. Hopefully the light is picking that up and you can see that it's metallic and it's got a sparkle to it. Um, I'm not sure if that's coming through on the camera or not, but it does have, an, in person you can certainly see the sparkle. And so what I did was um, I had read about that sparkle paint and it's kind of hard to work with. so. I had bought a, uh, it's cobalt blue Rust-Oleum is what I use. So I bought a regular can of cobalt blue, um, a can of cobalt blue metallic, and a can of clear coat. And I put down two coats of um, regular uh, cobalt blue, and then a coat of metallic, and then two coats of clear. And it actually came out really nice. It is, the metallic paint is difficult to work with. I will warn you of that if you want to do the same thing. Um, it tends to clump. There's a few areas where it clumps and I just couldn't get it out. Um, it, it, uh, it can clog really easily. So it is kind of a pain to work with. Um, but I'm pleased with the way this one came out. The results, it looks really nice. 
Um, so that's about the size of it. Also, I, I use this acrylic fretboard. Um, this is made by, or a fingerboard, I should say. It's not really a fretboard. Um, made by CB Giddy. Uh, it just comes, you just put it on there, and that's about the size of it. You can see there are some kind of shiny spots there because I got some moisture underneath there, and I took it back off and cleaned it, thinking that I might have got some, some moisture in there, and I've still got them. I think it's just because it's summertime and it's so hot uh, in Texas, so I may have to um, wait a couple weeks here and take that off and try to dry it out. And the sound is just incredible. Now, I'll do a sound sample for you, but I am not a steel guitar player. I've never played a steel guitar in my life. This is the first one I've ever even attempted to play. Um, and also, I tuned this one up with the C6 tuning. I used the southbound C6 strings, so it has the uh, Nashville tuning or the Hawaiian tuning. Um, which, after I made that decision, then after that I read about it, and they said that's one of the most difficult tunings to learn that uh, you should start with open D or, or open uh, E tuning. But uh, hey, <laughs> that's, what, that's the way I do it. So um, 